देख से तू अति सुंदर रचना कृपा निधि बोले वाई ब्लिसफुल वेन श्री राम सात द्रिज वॉज कम्प्लीटेड ही इमीजिएटली ऑर्डर दानर टू फ्लाई इन ऑल डायरेक्शन ऑल ओवर इंडिया एंड टेल दोज वानर who oh, were bringing more mountains just to put those mountains down wherever they were at that moment thus innumerable mountains from different places were placed at random in south india my dear friend we find this even now and manji received this message when he was in the vicinity of vrindavan a holy place between delhi and agra on his way from the himalayas to kanyakumari in an order is an order hanuman ji gently landed on the earth and carefully placed the mountain on the bank of yamuna river hanuman ji said to the guardian angel of the mountain reverend sir i am very sorry that i have caused you to be separated from your loving parent the himalayas in my name and even then i could not take you to the lotus feet of bhagwan sri ram but let me convey this situation to him and i will reply to you accordingly then he flew on to sri ram and there he spoke about the incident to which sri ram replied hanuman ji please fly away and console giri govardhan the mountain you had to put, put down that at the end of dwapar yuga i will appear in the form of sri krishna mm. uh, and he will enjoy my association and uh, my stay my stay my um, on 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 his top i will play my intimate past times on his peak rest in his caves climb on his trees bath in the ponds and fountains i will reside there for 11 years around hanuman ji conveyed the message of sri ram and giri govardhan was filled with pleasure his days and nights began to pass in the trance of waiting for sri ram to adore his peaks and dells and caves and everything so so that they would be suitable for the past times of his sri krishna thinking and imagining and feeling the past times of sri krishna he entered into intense communion with him since um, thoughts and imaginations of krishna are identical with him and uh, and he being the absolute reality transmitted his future past times into the heart of giri govardhan I means the deity presiding deity of giri govardhan he visualized all the leelas of krishna that was going to to be performed about 1 million years later in the trance of his meditation such is of course a mirror of eternity and he arranged his whole area accordingly my dear friend now back here in kanyakumari on the sixth day sri ram inaugurated the bridge with a huge worship ceremony of bhagwan shankar on this very day even now in the same spot the same image of bhagwan shankar is gorgeously worshiped there is palatial temple and the town built around is famous as rameshwaram it was at the eastern extremity of the bridge after the distribution of prasad hanuman ji Mm, said Sri Ram upon his shoulder, Anga said Lakshman on his shoulder, and Vibhishan carried a club in his hand, and along with his minister, they walked in front, and Jambavan and Susain walked on both sides, and King Sugriva walked in back. As soon as Sri Ram provided provided the lead, the sky became 
<coughs> thrilled with the great rejoicing of Vanaras, innumerable auspicious omens occurred in all directions. Vanaras leaped in the sky and began to fly. They landed on the bridge and rested only when they became exhausted. The flower of life has bloomed fully in Sri Ram consciousness and, and Hanumanji's union. They are the pinnacle of the evolution of consciousness, my dear friend. Wherever such personalities pass, the whole of existence celebrates and feels the glory of their presence. As all life is interconnected, we are one mass of consciousness and the sense of individuality and separateness stems only from the ego, ego idea, my dear friend. The more <clears throat> the more transparent and sensitive and meditative you become, the more you, you can take and digest the delight in yourself. In the presence of a fully bloomed flower of life, nature corresponds in transcendental rapture. So when Sri Ram and Anumanji passed innumerable souls of the ocean, fish, and seals and uh, octopus and uh, starfish and sharks and eels and crabs, all that raised their heads from the ocean and rejoiced in the holy presence of Sri Ram and Hanuman, my dear friend. Sri Ram Lakshman sit sitting on Hanumanji's shoulder and Gangadji's shoulders. In camping upon the hill of Subail is enough to, 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 to frighten the capital of Lanka. Vivishan told Sri Ram after they had all arrived at the northern beach of Lanka, Lakshman, look at this hill full of fountains and hoops and trees. Occupy this place. Allow all our soldiers to eat fruits and take a rest. Sri Ram announced and turned towards Grivji. Order the Vanaras to stay anywhere on this hill, but they should not approach Lanka. However, they are free to punish any Rakshasas who might try to come up here. Sri Ram and Lakshman went to a fountain for their evening bath and Sandhya Vandanam meditation. Sri Hanumanji collected soft leaves and flower petals and fixed a beautiful bait for Sri Ram and spread a deer skin over it. The whole eastern horizon reddened all around and the full moon shone, whitening and silverizing the entire field of nature. Sri Ram lay down on his bed and Hanumanji and Angadji sat near his feet. And, and began to massage his feet gently, my dear friend. Vibhishanji and Sungriji and Lakshmanji were surrounding him. Suddenly Sri Ram's eyes noticed, <coughs> noticed the south and he said, Friends, it seems that we will have to rest in some cave. A big black cloud is starting to overshadow the sky and I hear the rumbling sound of thunder and see and see the lightning there up. My Lord, that's not cloud, Vivishanji replied politely, but that is the canopy of the iron throne. No, canopy of Singhasan uh, means uh, Lion throne of King Ravan in his athletic ground on the southern silver hill of Trikut. This is not rumbling, but music played with wrestling, and that is not lightning, but the reflection of his wife's, means Mandodari's earrings. Oh, this is the show of Ravana's vanity, Lakshmi said quietly handling over the bow and arrow to Sri Ram and continued, let the Rakshasa see the skill of your archery, my lord. 
Well, Sri Ram smiled, looking at Lakshmana's face. He fixed the arrow in the bow and then shot it towards the silvery hill. All of them, all of the ten crowns, all of the ten crowns of Ravana's ten heads, the earrings of his wife and huge canopy were pierced by the arrow and they fell to the floor, my dear friend. It was the start of athletics. Ravan wanted to show his bravery and he wanted to divert the attention of the public to the athletics. So they, they would not feel fear, but his plan backfired. They all became highly fearful. I cannot sit in this unsafe place anymore. Mandodari, the wife of Ravana, stood up looking at the king and sharp eyes. With sharp eyes, she said. Everybody stood up in reverence of her highness. Cancel this program until tomorrow, Ravan ordered the wrestlers. The queen was greatly frightened, so it was it was necessary for him to accompany her to the palace. After Sri Ram's arrow had pierced the king's crown, the queen's earrings and the canopy, uh, it, it, it returned back to the arrow case of Sri Ram. And there were no more clouds rumbling, nor was there lightning, and all began to enjoy the soothing peace in the breeze and and, and a white, white glimmering moon in the sky, and the breeze coming from Hindama Sagar. Sri Ram stood up and began to walk, looking at the city of Lanka from the top of the hill of Subail. And, and then he became despondent and said to his people, can this beautiful city be saved? After a few days it will be turned into a cemetery. The ladies will be crying, spreading out their hair in deep sorrow. Of course, Sita has been assured that I will meet her. But, but after the warriors of the city have been uh, killed, this will be no consolation to the widows, my dear. We should try once more to negotiate for peace with Ravan, Hanumanji said. Prince Anga, could you go? This is in, uh, um, he is intelligent and, and there was friendship between his father, means Bali, and, and Ravan. Possibly he will listen to him as our envoy. Anga, you are a master of politics, ethics, and diplomacy. You can use Samdam Dandabhed. My mission is not only to regain Sita, but also to preserve the safety of the Vedic wisdom, the wisdom of the holy men and the godly race. And we must try to save this city. So Angadji was sent to Lanka for this purpose. He returned the next evening and declared that the war was inevitable. Ravan did not care to negotiate. Mm. War was declared from both sides and Sri Ram's soldiers surrounded the fort from all sides. Sri Ram appointed Neil and Mayand and Vivid on the eastern gate, Hanumanji on the western gate, Angad. Gaya and Gavanksha on the southern gate and Sri Ram himself attacked to the north gate. Sugriva, so Jamvant and Vibhishan were engaged in helping wherever they were needed, my dear friend. Ravan ordered his soldiers to kill the Vanara, throw them into the ocean and eat them up anywhere they want. As soon as the Raksasas mounted the fort, the Vanara leaped and pulled them down and dragged them to the ground, my dear friend. They began grinding them, pressing them with steel, tearing them with nails and binding them with their teeth, sending them reeling in the space. 
Angadji was fighting with, with Prince Meghna, Anumanji, with Jambu Male, and six highly powerful ministers of Ramana attacked Sri Ram. Very soon the whole sky became filled with the arrows of Sri Ram. One fourth of Ravana's soldiers were killed in the battle. On the first day, Ravan then appeared full of wrath, seated on his chariot, surrounded by a company in Atikai and Mahodar and Narantak and Meghnath. All of them were huge, tall, and lustrous. Sri Ram said, Lakshman. Fortunately, this thief has come in front of me. Bring me my Sharanga bow and protect me from the backside. And Sri Hanumanji was carrying Sri Ram on, his, uh, on whom Ravana was incessantly showering arrows, which were all breaking into pieces by striking against Hanumanji's steel like body. Soon Sri Ram took over the situation and broke the flag of Ravana's chariot. Next he killed the charioteer and horses and then he destroyed the chariot and showered, showered many arrows on Ravana's body and he fell on the earth. Ravana's whole body began to tremble. I don't kill an exhausted enemy, Sri Ram said, and he, and he cut off Ravana's crown. Then he said in a commanding tone, I order you to go back to Lanka and convalesce. Then come, come and I will show you my power. All my austerity from the past has been in vain. To me, the conqueror of the whole solar system, a human being has defeated me. Ravan's vanity was broken and he dared not to go into the battle right away. Ultimately, Kumbhakaran, <coughs> Kumbhakaran was awakened and he proceeded to the battlefield, never to return. Sri Ram's arrows cut him into many pieces, my dear friend. Ravan lamented bitterly and he repented for his blunder and praised Vibhishan who gave him some benevolent advice. Meghna surrounded by his powerful brothers came and consoling his father said, we will come to you after, after putting an end to our enemy. Be victorious, Ravan blessed them, but they were all killed by the wanderers. The battlefield was obscured with the dead bodies of Raksasas, eh, who were thrown into the ocean. Meghna, the great master of sorcery and black magic, came worried, became worried looking at the great destruction of his army. He went to Nikumbhila temple, took off his uniform, and put on black clothes and offered oblations to the fire. A shining automatic chariot rose from the flames and was able to disappear and appear at will in the war. Meghnath got on the chariot and disappeared and then he ordered his soldiers to divert the wanderer's attention by taking them. Most of the wanderers were pierced by the arrows and lay dead on the background, the battlefield, and he and the rest fell down in the great faint. Meghna then went to a place where Sri Ram and Lakshman were. He hypnotized them and pierced all their limbs and with sharp arrows, then he thought they were dead. He returned to Lanka. A great wave of joy flowed, and Ravan, out of love, embraced his son again and again. There was no sign of life in Sri Ram's army. After the sun set, the darkness grew and obscured the sky as if it were a black shadow of death. Only vision was saved, but it proved to him to be more horrible than death, he lit a firebrand and, and moved all the dead bodies over to find 
if someone was alive, the bodies of Sri Ram and Lakshman were lying dead, lifeless. Hmm. As soon as he approached Hanumanji, he awakened.